Welcome to Naked Spirituality, a video blog series of Sacred Attention Therapy and the Center for Human Awakening. My name is Rob Meager. For more information about Sacred Attention Therapy, the Center for Human Awakening, and our video blog series, please visit our website at www.centerforhumanawakening.com. And Center is spelled C-E-N-T-E-R. These video blogs support one of the center's core activities, which is collaboration and partnership with individuals, communities, and healing centers practicing personal growth and spiritual development. And our guests today are Joanne Silman and Eleanor Avenor. And we will be talking with Joanne and Eleanor about their unique healing work through something called keg cards. And I'd now like to invite Joanne and Eleanor to come on screen. Hi. Hi. Hello to you both. Hello. We're so Hi. glad to be here. It's, it's nice to meet you. I understand we're reaching you in Israel. Yes, we're in Israel. Beautiful. I'm calling you from Ottawa, Canada, and it's so nice to be able to use this technology to reach out to people around the world. It's One, wonderful. It is We're wonderful. very happy to be with you. <laughs> Good. Um, we want to learn all about and hear all about these keg cards uh, because I was very intrigued in the communication we had before uh, connecting today looking into um, this unique what I'll call a tool um, or even technique uh, it's very interesting but to begin our discussion today um, your work involves energy psychology, narrative therapy, and transactional analysis. And, and can you begin by telling us a little bit about each of these modalities or, or practices? Okay, I think the best way is to say how, I, how we got to it. Okay. I started out as a psychotherapist okay. with lots of, lots of talking. And then I realized talking is not enough. I worked in a hospital in the psychiatric unit Okay. as a psychotherapist okay. and um, for many, many years and also in a center for a crisis center. Oh, okay. And I realized that talking is not enough. Many people just don't want to talk or they can't talk or they can't talk about their feelings and not in touch with themselves. We need something else. Mm -hmm. So then I studied art therapy. Oh, okay. But then in art therapy, I started working in art therapy in the hospital. I worked in a hospital with it. And then I realized that a lot of people can't produce anything. They don't want to produce. They're too depressed to produce. It doesn't suit them. So then I started borrowing uh, pictures from different places. Okay. And I arranged questions according to exercises in energy psychology, you know, mm -hmm. tapping, chakras, mm -hmm. narrative therapy, people talking about their trauma, talking about what happened to them in their life, okay. their... Um, what else? What, anything that happened to them, all the traumas and their fears, anything that happened to them in their lives, and that was okay, but it wasn't enough. So then I realized that something more has to be done. We need specific pictures with specific questions. And in those questions, we have to cover narrative therapy, where people narrate what happened to them, either their trauma or their whatever happened to them in their lives. They can talk about it. And then that goes with subjective unit of distress, but it also, you know, SUD, there's SADS, how much is it from one to 10? I took one to 10 because it's easiest. How much does it distress you? And then I realized it has to have something physical to measure. So then we needed the pictures and they tell the story with the pictures. And then when they tell the story with the picture, they give us a SADS. And then after the SADS, I asked them to change something in the narrative. And so then we can make the suds easier. So then they tell the story again, and the trauma goes down, or the anxiety goes down, mm. whatever it is. Now, this connects also to transactional analysis, because in the questions, um, it's easy, much easier than to go back to Freud and talk about super ego, ego, and id. Sure. It's much easier to talk about parent, adult, and child. Mm. So what are you talking about? You're coming from your parent, the figure in the picture. For instance, this figure in the picture, this is one of our cards. Mm. Some people choose this card. And when they choose this card, they talk about feeling alone. 
So then I ask, who feels alone? How does what uh, in this figure? Is it the parent of the figure? Is mm -hmm. it the adult of the figure? Or is mm -hmm. it the child of the figure? Mm -hmm. And then they talk about the child in the figure, the mm -hmm. child in this figure. And so then it's very easy to go from the child in the figure, what happens with you? It, uh, when, when you feel sad, is it your child or your adult or your parent? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's always my child. I feel alone. And they talk about their fears. Mm -hmm. And then I ask them, well, how does this relate to your childhood? Can you remember something from your childhood? So then they come up with a story. And the story we analyze according to Freud. Right. So that's why you need deep psychology. Mm -hmm. Anybody who works with the cards, I think, anybody who's a psychotherapist, I think, should know about Freud. Right. Freud, Young, and Adler. Right. But in addition, they need something modern like CBT. Right. We also use CBT in the cards and NLP. The NLP for imagining. For instance, sometimes I ask them to imagine, for instance, this card. What would it be like? Beautiful. Let's say you got your wish and your fear disappeared. What would it be like? It'd be like this. Somebody chooses this card. And then I ask, well, how does the figure feel? Yeah. So what we do is what we do with the cards is the questions on the back. Is the questions. Wonderful. Let's make it closer a little bit. So I can see questions. Oh, it looks Wonderful. upside down. Yes. Turn it around upside down. It's no, upside it doesn't down. help because That's it's perfect. the camera. Well, you turn it upside down. That's all. Oh, that's no. also upside down. Now it's perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so the point being, yeah. it's a combination of yeah. deep analysis, CBT, yeah. transaction yeah. analysis, NLP, and yeah. each each picture deals with different problems. For instance, this picture yeah. is a picture that many people choose to describe. Um, sexual abuse, any kind of abuse. Why they choose it, I don't know, but they choose it. Right. So people who have abuse in their childhood choose this picture. And so does the, person, does the person, the client, the person working with you choose the card themselves? Or yes, what I, the way I work it is I talk to the person like an ordinary psychologist, an ordinary psychotherapist. But when the person gets stuck or says, I don't know, or I'm not sure what to talk about, or I don't know yeah. how I feel. I say, no problem. We have your pictures. Choose a picture that might describe how you feel. Right. Or choose a picture that touches something that you're thinking about. Sure. So the minute somebody is stuck, they have pictures. The minute the therapist is stuck, he or she has questions. <laughs> so the therapist, these are cards for any therapist. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Because the therapist doesn't have to know a thing. All the therapist has to do is ask the client to choose a picture that yeah. describes how you feel. Right. The minute you have a picture, you've got the questions. Sure. And the questions I organized are in a special way. Yeah. First are general questions yeah. that anybody can use. You can use them for coaching even. Coaching, counseling, it's not deep therapy. Yeah. Then in the middle are middle questions, which go right into the issue. Yeah. And at the end, I always have two or three questions that close it. I don't believe in leaving anything open. So the questions at the end close it and they're positive. Okay. Like the questions at the end are, how could this picture make the figure happier? What would you change in the picture so that you will feel better? What would you change in the picture so the figure would feel better? Uh, what in the picture would you add to the borders, to the boundaries? And that's when I ask them sometimes to take the picture and put it in the middle of a big empty white page and I give them crayons or colors or markers and they can add to the picture. So we have boundary issues. We have what we have outside the picture. Mm -hmm. And for some people, sometimes they like to talk about the past, the present and the future. Right. So what happened before the picture? Yeah. What happens after the picture? What happens in your life after the picture, after the situation? Mm -hmm. So we're covering it from all angles, and we're using many different kinds of therapy. That's why I call myself an integrative psychologist, right. integrative psychotherapy, because I go with the client. Yes. Uh, we also have four sizes. You, do you want to talk about the sizes? Yeah, we have an A4 size. Okay. Which is the biggest one. Sure. It's the super size. Yeah. Then we have an A5 size. Right. Which is again. Yeah. And Eleanor, you can add the A6 size, okay. which is smaller. And we have a mini size, which is this small. Oh, wonderful. Now, and there's a purpose for it. 
the purpose is when a person describes their trauma or their anxieties, yeah. they narrate, that's narrative therapy, but they can choose different pictures. And for the first time, they might say, um, I'm going to talk about my family, and my family just is uh, always bothering me and always there, and I have no privacy, so I'll choose a big picture. Sure. But then when they talk about the trauma and it gets better and better, they might want to choose a smaller picture. Right. So they can change the size of the picture, the yes. content of the picture, the yes. placing of the picture, sure. and then they tell the narrative again, and they go down in the suds from narrative to narrative. Right. Now, you've already begun to beautifully talk and share about the keg cards themselves, and I, I just want to step back a minute, and we're using this word keg. Keys uh, to emotional growth. Ah, I was going to ask. I created is it the word. Acro- is it an acronym I made it up. for something? It's an acronym. Here we are. Here, Here we are. Emotional growth. We made it up. I made it up. <laughs> Why did I make it up? Because I wanted something different. Okay. And I thought a keg, a keg has a lot of things inside of it. So okay. this is a keg, like a person. And it has inside self-esteem, awareness, redecisions, acceptance, doing, all mm-hmm. is inside. Keg, keys to emotional growth. Beautiful. Beautiful. And we have a trademark on it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. Now, are there specific conditions or diseases that you have found this approach using the keg cards are particularly effective in treating? Yes, particularly effective in PTSD. Particularly. Trauma is wonderful. Also anxiety disorders. Also depression, because it goes into deep issues and people can talk about things that they don't really know they have them there. Because the picture brings them back. For instance, we have a picture. It looks like sheep. Ordinary sheep. So when somebody says they have a problem with their family or at work or whatever, uh, how they feel with other people, I show them the cards and I say, pick a card or a picture that might describe how you feel in your family. And they choose this picture, let's say. So then I ask them, where are you in the picture? Mm-hmm. Uh, where, what is this? What is this? What is this? So for instance, one client said, I'm getting a divorce. This is my wife. She's running away. Uh, these are my children. They demand a lot of time for me. Or somebody else said, these are my children, they don't care. This is my wife, she's taking all my money. And this is me, I'm the scapegoat. So everybody has a different story about it. And all it is is three sheep. That's all it is. But people project on it. But they're beautiful insights for you, the therapist, to be able to uh, share with you where the client is. It's very revealing. It's very, very, it's better than Warshaw. It's much better than Warshaw, but it does the same work. Mm-hmm. You, immediately get it, you immediately get where the person is, what's mm-hmm. wrong with them, how they feel, mm-hmm. but you can also talk about what you can do about it. Because for instance, with a sheep, one of the things I do with clients is uh, say, I'm this sheep. So I ask, what can this figure do? How can the figure not be a black sheep? So somebody said to me, he can dye his hair. Dye his hair. So I said, fine, he can dye his hair and that will change how he feels. Yes, if he changes the color of his hair, he will be white and he'll feel better. And so then the next question is, what could you do to make yourself feel better? Mm -hmm. So in other words, you always can get where the person is. They start with the figures on the picture and then they get where they are. And I I understand that all of these cards are unique works of art. Definitely. The cards at the beginning in this set, we have this set now. This set, which is like wildflowers it goes, is made up of pictures that friends and uh, family members drew. I didn't want art because art has nuances and the people have opinions about art. I want it to be something that nobody saw before, nobody has any opinion, they're clean. I wanted something clean. So for instance, our niece drew this. Our niece was 14 years old. She drew her classmates. So when people choose the pyramid and they go in and choose one of the people here, and I say, where are you? And they show where they are. We have lots and lots of stories. Want to tell a story? Yeah, I'll tell, tell one story. of them. A woman came with very deep depression 
and she couldn't say what's the reason for the depression. Mm. She just knew she felt terrible. And she was under uh, medicine, medication, she had meetings with a psychiatrist, and she had all the time the urge to uh, commit suicide. Mm. And she couldn't tell Eleanor why. So Eleanor told her, you know what, pick a picture that represents the reason why do you feel so bad. So she looked around all the pictures, and sure enough, she came up with this one. Mm. And Eleanor asked her, where is your problem here? Where are you here? What is bothering you? She said, this big person here, this bad, big one, he's inside my stomach. Mm. And every time I eat, he gets fatter and fatter and fatter, and then I'm afraid I'm going to explode. So I better not eat. And if I eat, I should vomit, so this person won't have any reason for growing. And then it came out to be that this woman has a lot of eating problems, and she didn't look like it. Nobody knew. She was very well dressed. She was in the right shape, in the right form. She looked good, and her inside feelings were terrible. So then Eleanor put her on a special uh, sequence of sessions dealing with her eating problems. And sure enough, everything was fine and everything was good. So this is one example. And she hadn't been diagnosed with eating disorders. Mm. She had been diagnosed with depression. Mm. It's a client I got in the hospital. Nobody knew she had any eating disorders. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking at this picture, just we got to was it. an enabler for her to talk about it, to see it mm. for herself. So it's a diagnostic tool, even though it's not officially a diagnostic tool. Yes. Yes. We have plans. <laughs> We have lots of plans. <laughs> another example is <laughs> another example. There was a family that their child had a problem because they were getting divorced, right. and the child wasn't having good communication with his friends. He wasn't doing his homework. He wasn't going to school and coming up back happy. And they thought it was because of their divorce, and they came to the clinic and with the child. And the child was asked to pick a picture that represents how he feels today. Very innocent. So the child picked this picture and he said, this is how I feel today. So Eleanor asked him, where are you in the picture? And he said, I am here in the picture. There is a picture here, a child here that has something on his mouth like a stop sign or a hand, and he says, this is me, I cannot talk, I cannot say that this boy is bullying me all the time, and that's the reason I feel so bad now, but I mustn't say anything, it's a secret, and it just popped up, and the parents were very surprised to hear it, because every day when he comes back from school, he says everything is fine, my friends are okay, the teachers are okay, just didn't uh, perform very well at school. So they were surprised, and this picture helped it come out. Mm. So it's an innocent picture drawn by a 14-year-old girl, but people can identify with it. Yes. I want to mention we had many, many more pictures. Talk about this one. Just a minute. We had about 250 pictures. Okay. And we worked with them. Yes. workshops and my clients in my clinic. And while working with them, we saw which pictures are more yes. effective in, in getting people to talk about their issues and their mm. problems. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the pictures that we thought were the nicest or the prettiest. Yep. And then we, it enabled us to pick the right uh, pictures that will enable a good work. Mm. Now you wanted to talk about this one? Yeah, talk about this one. Okay. This picture, what do we see here? Do you want to tell us what you see here? <laughs> yeah, we'll try that on you. Oh, no, <laughs> what, 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 okay. what do you see here? Great. Um, well, I see four figures. They look like four women. Three are sitting together. Uh, what looks like in the background, and there is uh, another figure, again, looks like a woman, more in the foreground. Okay. Okay. How do you feel when you look at that picture? 
What do you think they feel? How do you feel and what do you think they feel? How do I feel? Okay. How do I feel? Um, I'm feeling some compassion for the figure that feels like they're in the foreground because I feel, I sense there's some ostracized, they're being ostracized, they're being um, perhaps pushed away from the group. You got it. People who have problems with belonging issues always do this picture. Mm. Always. Mm-hmm. It's either the three figures don't belong or the one in front doesn't belong, mm. but somebody is not included in a group. Mm. So anybody who has this feeling that I'm not included in the group, they choose this figure, yeah. they identify with one of the figures, and then they tell what the figure feels. So you're getting into their problem. Yes. Whereas if you just have normal psychotherapy and you're talking to somebody, mm. they, they don't know I'm, I'm upset because I don't belong to a group. I'm not upset. I'm upset right. because I have belonging issues. But that's how you get right at it. Mm. What it a, works. What a beautiful technique. Well, I can, I can see that. Um, and I can feel that, uh, it, it, I sense it's a beautiful way to, as you've talked about, start to get to the heart of the matter with the person fairly quickly. It also gives them a lot of ownership, um, because they're looking at all these cards and there's something they identify with. And they choose it. I don't tell them. They choose it. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's that that wonderful expression in therapy. We we only ever meet the client where they are. Exactly. Um, and it allows us to meet them where they are, and in fact, allow them to lead the way in the healing process. We merely follow along. Exactly. You know. Hopefully- Another thing I'd like to mention is that because we have the guiding questions in the back of the picture, sure, the clients can read the questions. Ah, beautiful. And choose questions they want to answer. Ah. And they, they don't, don't want, want to answer. answer. I okay. always ask what questions you not want to answer, and I mark it in my notebook. Sure. And I know there is a problem. That's what is pushed underneath. And what they want to answer, they answer and they choose. Mm-hmm. I never push them because I think defense mechanisms are there for a purpose. Of course. They help a person. So yes. I would never go to ruin the defense mechanisms. Right. Um, uh, Eleanor and Joanne, if anyone wanted to reach out to you to find out more about these CAD cards in your work, is there an email address uh, yes, or a website? We have, we have a website, which okay. you already have. Okay, I'll make, sure have, to sh- I'll make sure to share that in the scrolling credits at the thank end. Thank you. And we also have um, emails. The okay. emails of the cards are keg cards, K E G C A R D S, okay. at gmail.com. Beautiful. I'll and make- I'll also give you my private email okay. if anybody wants to talk about. Okay. Um, my private email is E L E A N A V. Beginning of Eleanor Avenor. Okay. Um, at research, R E S E A R C H. Okay. Dot hypha, H A I F A. Dot A C. Dot I L. Wonderful. We'll make sure that's in the scrolling credits at the end. Thank you. Thank you very I much. Want to thank, thank you very you much. Both Joanne and Eleanor for being with me, for sharing your beautiful work. It is, thank you. It is unique. And I may even myself follow up to talk about the possibility of getting the cards. I see them as a a beautiful technique approach to being able to work with people. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. It was my pleasure. (laughs) Bye-bye.